Hey there, Chad here. Thanks for joining me today. We are back to a familiar game, Ostronauts, and this is Ostronauts version 0.14. This came out in beta just a few weeks ago, and I've been playing it like mad to try to learn enough to understand what is new and what might be interesting to look at, and frankly, how to play this game in its new state. Before we jump into it, I'd like to take 30 seconds to ask you though, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, I would really appreciate it if you do. It will help me with keeping this channel going and give me some opportunities to maybe uh, improve the production quality of the videos that I do. I appreciate your considering doing that. I try not to post anything that's junk and I try to respect your time with what I do put together. So if you could do that, that'd be great. And as always, please consider a like and a comment if you can. Thanks and let's get to it. Now, if you look at the change log on Steam, it is huge. In fact, the first line of it says a complete change list may be too long to post here. Now, I only started playing Ostronauts in version 0.13, 13. So I don't know if this is typical for them or not. I do know they do, I, I had heard usually about twice, maybe three times a year, they'll have a major release. But regardless, this feels like a whole lot of content that has changed and come out. And the game is looking really, really good. Just looking at this screen right now, you might notice that in the lower left, my character has a whole bunch of statuses. And these are statuses that we used to be able to see if we clicked on him, uh, we would see up in the corner, we could catch some of the statuses that, that were impacting him at the time. This seems to be a little more cohesive and in a single place, easy to see, and it's always available. So that's kind of nice. We have the ability to see things like how hungry are we? Are we sleepy? Are we dirty? Bathroom issues, if we're thirsty, things like this, our, our energy level and etc. The amount of strain we're under, things like that. This is very helpful for kind of planning out your day when you're about to do a big undertaking, like building a new room on your ship. Some of the other things that become really quick to notice is if you go into the navigation console. This screen has changed quite a bit. There's a few different things happening here. First of all, we have torch drive controls that are different than what we saw before, and I don't fully remember what this looked like. I can say that this is all functional and new at this point, though. The plotting of courses has changed. The uh, ability to kind of fast forward your what you're seeing on the map to be able to better plot where you're heading is something that's a new factor. We also have the flight dynamics monitor over here. We're able to fly in atmosphere now with some ships and there are new parts to build on ships to make them aerodynamic, things like that. I think the control panel here is new looking, but I think the functionality is the same as what we might have had before. But we do have station keeping now. Clicking that, uh, I don't have a tower target, so it's not going to do anything, but clicking that gives us an effect. And we also have rotors. I haven't even begun to see what this is about myself. I've been kind of playing with a lot of the other parts. Now, one of the things you might have noticed on that change log listing in Steam is that it says you should start a new character. And that's been part of the problem. I had to start a new character from scratch and I am still paying off my initial loan with this character. It is not as easy as it used to be in the previous version of the game. The biggest issue I'm running into I'll show you right now is when I go to do things like repair goods or, you know, fix my ship up so that it is more functional and just clean. Repairing things takes an extremely long time now compared to before. Like if I recall in the first few episodes of my series, I had completely cleaned the ship in about 45 minutes of game time which at 16 times speed, you know, that's, we'll call it three to five minutes is I think what it took to actually make that happen. In this one, it took me two full days to get my initial ship, my dream, uh, which, you know, we'll take a look at some of this stuff in a little bit, but the dream is only about this big, right? It took a day to get that to happen uh, of game time. To, to clean it up, get it so everything was fully repaired and ready to go. So as you can see, I'm at four times speed now, even at 16 though, he takes forever. And this is actually really high 
well-conditioned stuff to begin with. It's not in disrepair, but you can see it's taking quite a while for him to work through this, even with good tools. In fact, it was so bad. In my first attempt to play, I created my new character, and I thought I must have messed something up with how I created him, because just um, uninstalling the seats and then repairing them in the dream to, to sell, doing a restore on those, it took like five minutes real time to get the four seats fixed up. And I thought, oh, I must have missed one of the skills to make that happen more efficiently. I went back and I rebuilt and rebuilt and a couple, you know, three, three builds later. No, it is just that slow. It is not something they call out with big bold letters in that list of things, but there are some comments in there that say that they adjusted the time of things like repairs and restoring. And it looks to me like they're more realistic now. So I do appreciate that. It was a little silly that I could repair my entire ship in 45 minutes, right? That's, that's a little silly. Um, you will spend a tremendous amount of your early game time getting your ship up to snuff so that, you know, you can fly around with some satisfaction that it's not going to fall apart uh, and that things won't break. Speaking of which, I had things break as I was flying around. I developed a hole, lost pressure in my ship, and that led to a restart in that particular build, um, character build, and I didn't ever really recover from it. So this is the latest one that I started. We start on the 25th, so he's six or maybe seven days old now. As you can see, I still have a huge debt if we, oops, I turned off auto task, that wasn't my intent. I still have a huge debt if we look at my mortgage. Um, I still have 450,000 to pay off. In build 13, I had my ship paid off uh, certainly within the first two days. I think I had it paid off in the first day. I don't remember for sure, uh, but it was certainly possible to do that. It was, it was something that you could do. Now, along with this, there's a lot of new stuff to play with. And one of the things they completely overhauled is the reactor. If you recall in the past, we'd get a core reactor and we'd drag it in here and we'd go and sell it for, you know, 40,000. The reactor isn't just one piece anymore. It is a ton of pieces. I'm going to go ahead and pause this because I accidentally stopped him or he ran out of things to do. If we look at this right now, we'll see there's two of these. These are field coils. There are four of these reactor core floors, and you'll notice that, you know, they're all a quarter of a piece, so they'll, they'll make a full other piece. We have this MHD generator. We have this laser array. This is not a weapon. This is something that's used to power the fusion reactor. Uh, CO2 scrubber is pretty normal. We have a pellet feeder. That's what sends the fuel into the reactor so that the reactor can work. Thrusters, those things are all old school, but uh, I think there was one other piece here, a capacitor. Yeah, the capacitor is another huge part of this. This reactor comes with all you, to build it, you have to have all of these parts. It takes up a lot of space. It probably would fill most of this room if I were to build it. Frankly, I'm not in a position just yet that I can build that. So I won't be traveling to the other parts of the system at this point. But speaking of that, let's come back over here and take a look at the map and how much has changed on that. So you might notice, again, this screen is awesome in, in some of the stuff that's been added to it. The other screen is pretty much the same as we used to see. Uh, so I do want to be clear on that. But we, if we zoom all the way in, first of all, I forgot I selected something other than my destination. Let me, let me see if I can find that here. There we go. So track this down. If we go look at Oleg, here it is. So that's where I'm flying back to right now. And I want to slow that roll down a little bit. I am still 48 minutes away. I started at doing 137 meters per second. I started at four hours away. I've sped it up, slowed it down a little bit uh, so that I could get some things done housekeeping in the ship. Um, right now, we're just going to go ahead and pause that. So that's where I'm headed. If you find my ship here, I am way down here. So the first thing that I would say is there's, there, it feels to me like there's a lot more ships out here to look at. I've probably visited in this game, I've probably visited somewhere between 25 and, we'll say 25 and 50 ships. I think that gives me a good range of how many I've actually touched at this point. 
they're everywhere. There's, there's tons of ships you can go and visit, and there's good ships close. And I, I don't know that there was ever a problem with that. I do feel like I used to run into a lot of really small like tugs that literally had nothing closer to the port. And then as I went further out, I tended to get freighters or things like that. And I will say that where I have found nice freighters, like this one out here, uh, there's one oh, way out here. This was a good one. In fact, this is where I just took most of my walls and floor for the new area I'm building. You know, you, the, it's, it's a trip to get to these. I feel like I don't move quite as fast in the local system as I did. It feel, felt like you would get up to, you know, 200 meters per second really, really quickly in the dream, just stock without adding anything to it. I don't think I got it above 120 uh, to get somewhere from a just waiting for the acceleration perspective. I, I kind of got a little bored with waiting for it. And I decided I would use that time to clean my ship and repair stuff. So the system feels a lot bigger. Now we see all these ships. If I come way out here, we see the old nav stations that used to be there. Those tend to still be there. Um, I remember there was like flotilla or something, right? Oh, there it is. Yeah, that's still there. But if we scroll out, what we will see is, and I'm scrolling a lot, we have a ton of other stuff now out here that we can go and look at. Most interesting is probably Venus. They have made a very uh, concerted effort to improve what the planet Venus has to offer right now. And I'm assuming that's where you might do some atmospheric flying with your ship. I think this is actually Earth. Yeah, there's Earth and the port near it. So we have a place to visit there. Most of the other ports, what I have read, it says that they are fleshed out at least to have basics for everything. So that's kind of good to know. Here we go, this is where Venus is. But Venus, they said, is pretty much set up the same as Oleg. It's got a lot of stuff around it that you can do. And again, I haven't had the time to get to building the, uh, the torch drive to be able to get there yet. I do have every intention of doing that. I just haven't gotten there yet. So that is something to know about. You'll notice this accelerometer and uh, the reactant remaining isn't quite as important for what I'm gonna show you here, but we have acceleration is a, is a factor now when you are flying your ship. As you can see here, um, my ship is currently capable of a 0.42 G acceleration. This, what I have seen is that it can get high enough to knock your character unconscious and there are pharmaceuticals that you might need to take in order to prevent that from happening. So right now I, uh, I'm really not messing with that a whole lot, but it is something to be aware of as you play through the game. I'm really looking forward to checking this out. It looks like there's, you know, three stations here that we can come in and visit outside of Venus, and then there's this one out here, orbital, orbital station. So I really have no idea what to expect there. I've kind of intentionally been avoiding spoilers. I usually don't do that. I usually don't worry too much about spoilers. I figure um, I'll enjoy it either way. I kind of wanted to sort of organically play this and see where I end up. And that's kind of why I haven't been hitting the forums real hard to see specifically what some of these other changes are that are going on in the game. So that's a quick look to see what's going on on the ship that's new. In the next episode, we'll take a look at the station and check out some of the new kiosks and some of the other stuff that's there that is a little different than it was before. I thank you for your time and until next time, fair travels.